Good morning, everybody. I think we're up and running. Overcast day here in Tokyo. It's a nice one. It's going to be overcast, a little drizzly in the afternoon, and I don't think it's going to be too hot. Might be, all in all, quite a pleasant day. Not enough rain to really disturb tourist activities and stuff. Just a bit of drizzle. The green truck there, I guess that's the alternate garbage truck for the Korean restaurant, right? He uses his new blue garbage truck most days, but this is his alternate. Okay, Thursday morning. The big question, the big guess, how far or where did we get to on the block? Are we done? Is it cat fur? Where are we carving? All will be revealed in a minute. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, gang. These are a bit too big. Let's get these done. Good morning, morning. Thursday morning in Tokyo. We are cooking with gas here. We are really, really busy. The shop itself has been fairly quiet. Now that we're in the last half of June, the number of visitors is on a steady uh, decline, count-wise. We knew this would happen. This is the... We have the two peaks each year. We have a camel hump pattern to our shop business. The spring hump is done and we're now down. We're heading into the, the slump in the middle. Don't know where it will be. It's still heading down a bit. We'll have a quiet July, we think. But even though the visitors are coming in are quiet, we are busy, busy, busy. There's any number of projects still cooking. I miss an upstairs is doing test printing on two things at the same time. She's running the Yoshida testing and she's running, dare I say this, ramen cats testing. And she's called for one more block for the ramen cats, and I'll be doing that this afternoon. It's actually moving forward, bit by bit. Who else? Day chans up there. She's doing test printing on Hokusai Reborn prints. Whatever that means. Ishikawa-san's off this week. Suga-san has uh, just finished the scent of chrysanthemums. She has handed them over to me. I've got them all here. Somewhere. And if you remind me, later on, I can show them to you. When we get maybe near show and tell time, I've got so much stuff to show today in show and tell. Remind me before that, and we can take a look at Sugasan's batch of prints. They are now out and ready. They're not in the catalog yet, no order page yet. Give us a bit of time. We've got to write a story, get it all organized. But they are ready. Someone's asking, would we do the audio thing? Yeah, I would like to do more of those, absolutely. At the moment, YouTube is just so backed up so far, there's not really any time to do sort of special projects. I just got to get another normal video out. But the thing you're talking about, I very, very, very much like that and want to do a lot more. I also want to mix that in with the, the, the binaural audio when I go outside with the camera. So yes, I would very much want to do that again. Let's get going. There's so much to do here. Let's get going. Let's get going. So not to blow you away, but uh, all I can say is, yes, I would like to do it right now. Impossible. Okay, we're, oh yes, okay, from our printers. There's two packages from printers just received. Get this out of the way. Two packages just received. This one came in yesterday. Mitamura-san, who is a local printer, he lives and works here in Tokyo. He's a member of the, uh, the print Kumiai, you know, the, the guild, the people who make, make prints. They're the hired guns. He's a, an independent printer, a hire, craftsman for hire. And we don't use many of those guys because they don't really come around to our way of printing, but Mitamura-san has done. He's come around bit by bit to our way of doing things. Very much willing to work with me to get the prints the way I want them. And it's not a new print. Everybody knows what this is. This is the 12th print in the Japan Journey series, which we published in, name a date, 2020, 2019, I don't remember. And it's our version of making a, a prints with a bit of a mix. They're sort of ukiyo-e type base with outlines and colors, but they have a shinhanga feel, a depth and a palette that you won't find in most ukiyo-e, let alone shadows. And Mitsumura-san's done, he's pulled it off. He's done a good job on this. Very, 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 very consistent work, top to bottom. These go into stock. The reason we called for printing on this is that we're getting low on stock. There's only about 10 left or so in the storeroom and we need to get it back in inventory. 
Someone says, can we see the mark of the kento? You can see it. This is interesting too. When you see the whole deck like this, look. This, the, this is the mark left by the hikitsuke. And maybe there's one by the kento. And it's funny. When you look at any given one piece of paper all by itself, I guess it's on there. It's on the edge of the paper where the paper goes kachunk into the registration marks. You don't see it on one piece of paper unless the printer has been careless and smudged it into the corner, which we generally ask our printers not to do. But when you stack them up like this, it's funny. You can see there's the line. So there is an actual drop of pigment along the edge face of every sheet. Interesting. Yeah, Mitomura-san does have an Instagram. Thanks for posting that, Karen. Yes, good. Someone says, how long does it take to post other publishers' works? I showed a lovely print from California. I'm not sure what you're referring to. I don't know. I'm sorry. Post other publishers' work. I'm not sure what you mean. I'm sorry. Then this one, we know who this is from. This is one, and Ome, our shipping staff in Ome, they wanted this yesterday. It came in here yesterday, so they couldn't get it yesterday. But it's my priority. As soon as the stream is over, I go through these things one by one by one by one by one. And these will have to be shipped to Ome. Actually, if there was an instant courier service, we would grab an instant courier just to drive it out there. Yeah, we've got it. Tom1060 has got it. This is the third batch, the batch that was supposed to go to customers on the 21st, which is going to end up going to customers on the 23rd. We're two days late on this. But hey, hey, hey. hasn't put the name on. Again, he hasn't put the name on. I have got to do that then this morning. I could have done that during the stream today. Didn't get ready for it. Okay, here we are. Look at this. This is the uh, third print. No, this is the fourth print in the Kyoto Journey series. And I think Jed's doing an okay job. I don't think we're hitting home runs all the time here, but we are making pleasant prints and learning how to do this. I think this, I gave him 120, I think. I can't remember. I gave him 120. We don't need that many right now for the waiting subscribers, but we want to get ahead of the game. And he has asked me these days, when we're dealing with smaller size prints, he wants a larger quantity. I think we talked about this on the stream, just the stream just the other day. When the, when the number of quantity we give a printer is too low, they spend too much time mixing and not enough time printing. But because he's a machine-like printer, once the colors are mixed and it's ready to go, he just blows through it. He turns his TV on, watches the news or a drama, and just blows through it. So he wants larger quantities as long as they're small. What he can't do at the moment is handle large quantities of large-scale prints with many gradations. He's 75, and he just doesn't want that kind of difficult stress. And no, there's no smoke. He knows the rule. There. The rule is absolutely adamantly set. If I detect any tobacco smell, he don't get paid. So that's, that's he and I have worked that out years ago. He smokes in another room now. The printing room is kept clear of cigarettes. We've tried to get him to quit, you know, just, I guess, whatever, it's easy to blah, 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 but uh, difficult when you're that age. He won't quit or can't quit, whatever. So I'm talking about the bleed through. We do get different bleed through to the back, absolutely. It's a, there's a couple of things that, that, are, that make you feel the red is stronger. You're being a little bit confused because the red on the front is also stronger than the green next to it. So, of course, when you see the bleed through, you get the same thing. So there's not actually that much difference between the red and the other colors. 
not that much difference. You're seeing basically the same color lineup here. One difference may be this green. On the front, it's stronger and more powerful. On the back here, look at this. The two greens don't seem to have too much difference, but here they're quite different. But it's not specifically red that goes through. It could also very much be affected by the way he moistened the paper while he was doing it. The ideal is to keep the paper moisture at exactly the same level all the way through, but that's just a theoretical ideal. When doing a larger area like this, you might want the paper softer. But when you're doing an area with more fine things, like this, this Tori gate, it's actually quite easy to print because there's no wide, deep areas. You can get away with the paper being harder. And if the paper was too wet and too soft, it will absolutely kind of stretch in that area. So he will adjust the moisture level in the paper as he goes along, and that will affect too how much it goes through to the back. There's lots and lots of factors involved. And somebody says there could be something chemically about it that goes through a different way. I don't know at that level. That's beyond my, uh, my knowledge. But in a normal, traditionally made Japanese woodblock print, this is just about what you get. This is normal. And this is quite thick, full-bodied paper. So I've got to emboss these. I should have done that yesterday, actually. What I didn't... Do it. Didn't do it. We'll save this for another show and tell. This is an interesting folder of prints. I don't want to get into it now. We just don't have time. They're called thins. If I forget sometime and the stream's coming up next week or next week, remind me. I found this folder, which I've been meaning to show you for a long time, and I'll now keep it beside me here. So I'm going to totally forget about it now, but on one of the streams coming up, if you remind me about the thins, we'll take a look at this. Good, good fun. But now, to work. Where have we got to? The big reveal here. The leaves are all done. The flowers are all done. And yesterday, I had a marathon cat fur session starting in the ears, working my way up, all the way across his back, and then down his tail. The cat fur, I'm sorry, is all done. Today's the 22nd. We want to ship on the 1st. What's left to do? two cat faces, and then, of course, all the sewing machine lines, the outside borders of the cat. And then we have six kanji characters. Where should we start today? I think I'll just start sewing machines. Or let's head down to the feet. I didn't do that. Let's do that. Let's just grab a foot and head down to a foot. The cat fur was, it wasn't difficult, but it was, it took all day long sitting here hunched over the microscope. The idea with the fur is to try and get each one of those lines to have a bit of a brushstroke feeling to it. The original sketch didn't have that. The guy who did it was just really, really careless, and of course it was the scale. He just basically put little tiny scratches where he wanted fur to be. But as much as possible, I tried to make each one with a head and a tail, you know, these little spermy things swimming all over the place. We'll see when I get it done, if there's a flow to it. There should be like a flow as though it was in underwater. We'll see how well I got that done once we're doing printing. And at that scale, this is not easy. Anyway, let's go. Let's find a spot to zoom in. If we're going to go here... Let's find it. Move over. <laughs> Panic. 
consumer grade cameras with their connections that just flop around. Are we there? Okay, good. Let's get carving. It's been a couple of days since we saw you. This is Thursday morning here in Tokyo. The last stream was Monday morning. Uh, when I was doing the carving on Tuesday, our shop was closed, of course, on Tuesday. And uh, I got a full, full day down here, just the whole day. Staff tried to leave me alone as much as possible. I got just stuck into this block and uh, really got through it. And uh, I had a... I had the computer beside me, so I pulled up uh, my hard drive. I got a hard drive here with a ton of music on it, CDs that I've all scanned in or ripped in, whatever you call it. And I started with shuffle play just to see what would come up. And then something came up and I thought, gee, I'd like to listen to a bit more of that. So I turned off shuffle play and put in a punch, couple of keywords. And I had a Harry Nilsson day here on Tuesday. If anybody had been listening, it would have driven them crazy. But I just, whatever, that was the mood I was in. I, I have everything he ever 
published RCA stuff and the other ones, label labels. I just keyed them up in a, in a chronological line, hit play, and with the exception of taking a break for lunch and, you know, having staff meeting and stuff like this, I had a Harry Nelson day going through the guy's, uh, going through the guy's life on record, you know. Had a great time. He's not everybody's favorite, but uh, I like it very much. And part of it is his vocal range. Of course, his vocal range is just stupendous. But his core vocal range, where he sings when there's no straining or there's no fooling around, his vocal range sort of overlaps mine. I'm, I think I'm a, I would be a baritone if I was a singer. I think technically he was a tenor, but the best stuff he's done is a little bit lower, more in the baritone area. So I feel like I'm singing it. I can't actually sing like that, of course. I can't sing at all, but I feel like I'm singing it. So I had a wonderful, wonderful day, getting acquainted with a bunch of old friends. A lot of that stuff wouldn't fly today. It was 1970s. And this is not 1970s, but it doesn't matter. Dave just had a, had a day with a bunch of his old favorites. She doesn't live here anymore. This kind of carving is just so much fun. It just doesn't get any better than this. This stuff, it's curved both ways. You've got to make a nice shape to it. This is just so much fun. This is a gift from the gods to be able to do this. Someone says, if I tried a digital microscope, Adam Savage, blah, 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 blah. I know I haven't, but there's a big question, you know, to have a microscope, whether it's optical or digital, there is something, will the digital microscope do this? I need space here to put my hands in. Now, there's lots of different types of microscopes out in the world where the, the bottom lens, whatever it's called here, has to be close to the work. And I suspect the digital microscopes you're talking about need that lens, that camera. It's not a lens, it's a camera, to be close. I need to put my hands in here. i got to carve. And I've also got to look down on my carving. So before you promote your digital microscope to me too heavily, maybe check into that and see. And my guess, I don't know anything about this, but my guess... Touch the computer. Come on, don't touch anything, Dave. I, my guess is... So if it can be done with a large space between the, the lower optics and the work, then okay, we could maybe try this. But if that's not doable, then, then it's out of the, out of the, out of the game. You know.
Oh, chat, 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 chat. What's this? Chat stop then. Did we go down? Did we go down? Sorry. Because I touched the computer. Ah! Okay, sorry. So the advantage of digital scope, it's easier to sit and look at the screen than lean into the lens. I know what I need to do is I need to watch my hands. I mean, of course, I'm carving. I need to watch my hands. Many, many, many years ago, before I got this, what did I try? I tried getting one of these handicaps, putting it on a stand over my head, looking down at the block. And I put a wide monitor in front of me and I tried zooming in with the camera from above and looking across at the monitor. So my hands were doing what they were doing and I'm like some surgeon working at remote and looking across at my hands. And at the beginning it was really, really bizarre and I couldn't do it. Just thought, this is crazy. I want to watch my hands in real life. But I realized that if you practice, 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 you could do that. So that could be a way to do this. You've got your Apple goggles or whatever. I've got a digital camera, digital scope, whatever you, you call it, looking at the thing. And I'm just sitting back here in my own world carving. I guess you could get used to that. Uh, I guess so. At the moment, because this is real, I can put this in, I can pull it out, I can take over, I can put my smaller lens in. This gives me complete flexibility here. I'm certainly not about to change my system right now at my age. But if someone was just starting out or trying this, whatever, you know. For me, the advantage here is simply I look down at my hands at the real block. I can sit back like this and look down. I can move my head forward and there we are. I'm looking at the same thing. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of happy with this. No, I think I did. I touched the computer here and we've learned. The, the connections are, you know, we've talked about this many times. Stuff like this is consumer grade connections and uh, they really, really, really are insecure. Well, it's my fault. I'm sure I crashed it there. Don't touch the computer, Dave. That's all there is to it. mentioned listening to music on Tuesday and now they're stuck in my head it's going round and round and round you know I think the one that kept coming back to me most I don't remember the actual title is it called all I think about is you is that the title somebody from that era is John here he's probably not here today I think that's the title Harry Nelson it would have been mid 1970s I think it's called all I think about is you and that's the one that keeps uh, earworming Dave here it keeps coming back around and around and around my daughters would just laugh, you know, old-fashioned stuff.
We head down the leg, I guess. <laughs> you should clear it first. It, it's much easier to carve these curved lines if you're working into empty space than if you're working into solid wood. So let's clear it out like this. Clear it out on both sides. this far for now. I'm not going to be getting a full shot at carving today. There's a couple of things that are going to be interfering. We're coming up, I've mentioned this before, we're coming up to the year end, accounting year end. And, uh, and the next few days are going to be full of other activities, so I've got to get some of the uh, preparation work done for the year-end accounting. We've had trouble with our, our account, accountant because we have a custom accounting system we build ourselves, which is really actually quite sophisticated. We have trouble at the end of the year when we try and interface with our tax accountant. <coughs> because he, of course, has just packaged software. That's the way they all work these days. None of them do it you know, originally. They all just work with packaged software. So they're expecting that their clients, companies like us, who are asking their services for the year-end tax accounting, they're expecting that companies like us also use package software. And the two systems talk to each other, everybody's happy. And we don't use package software, we have a complete custom system. So there's always this problem and, uh, of getting our data formatted and printed in a way that the tax guy, the accountant guy, can understand. And it's a, a reached ahead this year because he told us a couple of months ago, look, if you guys do what you did to me last year, I just can't do this. You know? we're, we're like, we gave you the numbers you asked for. We're giving it to you in proper, normal accounting principles and the data is what it is and there's a chart of accounts and there's totals for each month and, you know. And he says, my software can't read that stuff, you know. It won't even read, his software won't even read Unicorn. <clears throat> Everything handed to a Japanese tax office has to be in shift JIS. They don't read unit code. <laughs> this is where we're at, you know. And no, we don't send it in by fax, but it might as well be like that. So, so we've got this problem now. We've sort of been putting it off for uh, 11 months. And here we are in the 12th month. And uh, what our guys have done, Aoyama-san upstairs, and our bookkeeping boy, Yamada-san, what they've done is they've found a... a an accounting software package out there that he would agree to use. And what they're going to do is they're going to rent or buy this software, figure out how it reads data. They're going to ask me to take our total yearly data, our chart of accounts and master journal, and output it in a form that that software can read, and then the tax guy should be happy. So we can still work with our own custom system, enjoy all the benefits from that, and we can hopefully get through this thing of getting our taxes done. So that's what we're working on right now. And they're going to give to me today, they're going to give me a massive CSV template. And I have to write a system to output our entire year's financial data to match that, uh, to match that format. And that's today and tomorrow. Some says glitches, I'm showing full green here. confused about the re repeating because I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again here. One piece of cap hair looks much like the next.
There was something else I meant to mention today. I got a, an email from Twitch yesterday, not personal to me, it was a blanket email to, I guess, all Twitch streamers, announcing that yet again they've updated their, uh, what's it called, like terms and conditions, and then the community guidelines, I think, was the specific one. They've updated the things that uh, you can and can't do. They're trying to make it clear that people have to make it clear which are X-rated streams, which are mature streams, and which are streams for, you know, your grandma to watch and stuff like this. And in the, when I went to the page that they had linked, there was a brand new set of uh, guidelines that said, specifically, it listed things that you can no longer do. It was either things that you can't do anymore or you can't do these if you want to be an R-rated stream or something. I, I don't remember the, the details. It just, it, I read this list of things that, oh, can't do that. Oh, can't do that. Okay, better be careful. We can't do this anymore. And the list went on and on and on and on. It must be on the Twitch website. Somebody could maybe link to it. And uh, some of the stuff I thought, like, why do they need to say you can't do this? I think I've, one of them, just the one I shared with the mods yesterday, something like, what you can't do anymore, you can't lie on your chest and expose your buttocks to the camera. I forget the exact wording. It was something like that. I shared it with the mods. Maybe they can remember the quote. I don't remember what it was. It's something like this. It wasn't forbidden content, content that needs to be labeled. Okay, gotcha. So if you do this, this is stuff you have to mark as being X-rated, whatever. So. So there we are, stream. I'm sorry to say that uh, in order to keep our family rating here, Dave will not be lying on his chest <laughs> exposing his buttocks anymore. But the stuff they listed, I was thinking, like, do people do this? It listed poses. You're not allowed to lean forward. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to spread your legs wide. It just, it, and it, maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, uh, what's the word, kind of a, uh, naive here but like are people like people do that on stream and people watch it <laughs> whatever 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 so someone says you haven't been out there i agree i haven't been out there and i'm not going out there but uh, it's easy for I, you know, i'm 71 years old and i grew up in a certain environment and it's easy for me to shake my head and say, what's the world coming to? And then, and then, and then, it's okay. I, and then I remember, wait a minute, Dave, a few years ago on Twitch, you carved a copy of a print made by Katsuko Hokusai involving a lady <laughs> and an octopus. So, so, okay, I'm not the guy to talk. I am absolutely not the guy to talk. You know, they're doing what on Twitch? Meanwhile, I am perhaps, in, in one sense of the word, there are people who would look at me as a porn merchant, I guess. So, so who am I? I can't, I can't, you know, nothing I can say on this topic makes any sense. So, so, so. Someone says, have I read the Japanese script in the Octopus Lady print? I haven't read it myself. Have I read translations of it? Yes, they're out there all over the world. It's really, really funny. It's, uh, it's really interesting and engaging. And actually, having read that translation, or having seen that translation, knowing about that is one of the reasons why I felt able to make that print. Because our general impression of that print, when we don't know much about it, or about the history, or the background, or what it is, our general impression of that print might be that there is, you know, violence, and or, you know, that it is really not a pleasant thing happening. But reading the text on that print makes you realize that, although of course it's all made up, such things didn't happen in real life, it's all made up in a sense of, can I say, a sense of fun. Fun, pleasure, and enjoyment, and, and, and fantasy. That it's not about violence and, and, and disgust, you know. It's all eye of the beholder, obviously, obviously. So yeah, for me to uh, complain that Twitch doesn't want me to Show my bum, whatever. It's of course hypocritical. Anyway, just curious, just curious. I got a good laugh out of that stuff. But do I understand the community out there as a whole? No, of course I don't. You know. Of course I don't. Makes me think about my grandchildren, little Clara. She's now six years old, whatever. The internet she will grow up with. What will she see and feel and find? You know? don't know. 
just have to follow the basic guidelines. Hope her parents and her family give her a, a core grounding in being a good human being. And then it presumably it doesn't much matter what she comes across because her core values will be, a, will be in place, you know. There's also another one. No, no, I get you know a Google News feed each morning when I wake up and you know do my email and click through a, a Google News and it's of course customized to what I've been watching. You know how these things work. So every time I do click on something, it knows I want to see. So whenever Twitch news comes up, it, some of it ends up in my uh, in my Google News feed each morning, of course. Same with all of us. Whatever. And one item I saw was it yesterday or the day before. Uh, because I've been clicking on Twitch-related news, it gave me some more. And uh, something about Twitch streamers, uh, top-level, A-level, or whatever they're called, A-level Twitch streamers are, are uh, abandoning the platform in favor of some new platform that started up somewhere. I don't remember what it was. Starts with X or starts with W or something. I don't know. And people are jumping ship because they can get more money somewhere else or something. I don't know. So who knows, will this platform that we're using today, will it survive? In what form will it survive? Can we keep doing this? Your guess is as good as mine. Coming along. Somebody got one hundred million to jump ship, yeah, right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All of this stuff, you talk about the claw and the fur and whatever, these, these lines are nice and clean to carve. But remember why they are nice and easy to clean and carve here. Because I've been through this. I've already traced all these. What you're seeing here is not hook-sized lines. The, the dirty, messy, scratchy, fuzzy, indistinct stuff that he put on paper here. It looks nice and easy and beautiful and clean to carve here because I spent, you watched me, I spent a month going through this thing. That's why this part of it's so much pleasure, because the sort of the drudgery and the decisions and the what am I going to do with this thing, all those decisions are behind me, and I can't see that anymore. So all we're seeing here is picture perfect, sharp, clean, carve me lines. But that's not where we started. Also, too, it suddenly jumped into my mind. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Talking about Twitch and terms of service and changes and stuff reminds me 
I got an email from Jed Sam last week. He and I are talking about the October print. We're starting to get ready for the design on the October print. The print you just saw, the shrine print, that was the August print. No. Yeah, that was the August print. No, no, no. That's the June print. The August print is carving right now, and Jed's getting ready to design the October print. <coughs> Sorry, sidetracked. Anyway, we're, we're discussing that, but he also mentioned in the discussion that he said, what do you think about the changes coming up to YouTube? And I'm like, tell me more. What's going on? And he said that he had heard that YouTube is implementing a new policy vis-a-vis -vis advertising. That at the moment, advertising is available to certain creators, people who have a certain number of subscribers, certain number of views, blah, 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 blah. You know, you can't just open a YouTube channel and start running ads. You've got to build up a certain level. He said that that's dropping, that people who have fewer subscribers and fewer views, et cetera, et cetera, will now be able to start running ads. And I'm, well, okay, Jed, that doesn't affect me because one, I've got, you know, lots of subscribers now, and two, we don't want to run ads. He said, shut up and listen. And the second part of the story was that YouTube is no longer, no longer going to allow people to turn off ads. That YouTube is going to run ads on everything, whether you like it or not. Now, at the moment, I've got advertising turned off. You can't turn it off for your entire channel, but you can turn it off per video. So each time we upload a video, it's a monetization option. You select what level of blah, blah, blah you want, and I simply turn it off for each video as we upload it. And Jed's comment was, you've seen the news, have you, that they're not going to allow this anymore. So after we finished our conversation, I went straight out to, you know, YouTube blog, the creator's blog, YouTube blah, 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 and I can't find this. I can't find any mention of this change. So let me toss this out to you guys right now. If anybody knows about this, or this is coming, or it's not coming, or it's an urban legend, or a rumor, or it's fact, let me know if you know anything about this. <clears throat> At the moment, I'm allowed to not have ads. And the, the rumor is that YouTube is going to change this and every video will have, will have ads. I did later when I couldn't find this, I asked Jed where he heard it and he didn't really know. So it could just be this is a, just, just a thing. But if you have heard about this and you have any knowledge, I would appreciate very much an update if you have any uh, any facts about this because boy oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy that would change life for us I do not want to do that but I do have to admit YouTube is supplying my content to people all over the world and at the moment they are not getting compensated for it and I have to face that bare fact I am freeloading on YouTube we've talked about this before and somebody from YouTube has explained it to me already a personal visit, not an official word from YouTube. He's explained it by saying YouTube doesn't care. They're happy that you bring viewers to the platform for quality content. Whether you monetize it or not is kind of irrelevant. But he wasn't speaking as an accountant or as a lawyer. And you can imagine the bean counters over in uh, wherever it is that Google is, you can imagine the bean counters saying, okay, that's it, no more freeloading. At videos that don't have ads, we're either going to take them down or put them at the bottom of the ranking or we're going to run ads. And if that's what happens, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Anyway, as I said, if you do have any uh, information on this or, or even more up-to-date rumors than I do, kind of let me know, please. Thank you. We knew it couldn't last forever.
So somebody says this is true. Is it Poison Rogue FS? Do we have any idea what markets this is happening in or when it's happening in? Somebody says, I don't think people would mind all that much. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, Tom 1060's got the ad, build my own platform. <laughs> he thinks we haven't already been thinking about this actually, but no, please, no, please, no, <laughs> please, no. <laughs> Just plant me six feet under right now, please, no. I already looked into it, quotes from S3 and cloud services and whatever, and it would cost us more. Forget my time, it would just cost us. The number of views on our videos currently, it would cost us way too much. Oh, it's Ayunasan, really? No way, we just got started. Is your camera okay? It started raining. Oh, it's just spring, I think we're okay. I think we're okay, it's 8.58, my God. I've done nothing. Well, not quite true. I've carved a bit of hair. Come say hello. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I didn't expect to see you for quite a while yet. Ma, 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 Talking a lot today? This morning? I guess so. I don't know. I hadn't thought so. I feel like we have this conversation every time. Every time she comes in, I'm always surprised. I guess what's what's what it, it's like. You know, you've got it's like somebody with advanced Alzheimer. Al, what's the word? You know, <laughs> Alzheimer's. Wizards. Hi Dave, and says hello. Hi Dave, how you doing? <laughs> Hi Dave, how you doing? <laughs> I have become my mother. <laughs> well, I don't know if I should laugh at that point. <laughs> laugh or cry. <laughs> no, no. Anyway, good morning, Ayano san. Good morning, Ayano san. Can I ask? Is it okay to ask about last night's dinner, or is it something we shouldn't ask about? Oh well, uh, he, <laughs> he was sort of busy. Like I figured okay. out, he went to um, mm. immigration yesterday. Oh, so okay. okay. To, Don't let it go. I, I thought there might be a story there, but it's okay. Oh, no okay. problem. <laughs> as long as he cooks like once, uh, twice a week, you know, on weekends, uh, I'm quite happy. With that system, it's so. okay. I was bothering Ayano san the other day with some questions you shouldn't ask yeah, about people's private life and <laughs> stuff like That's this. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> It's not a secret anymore. Our no, relationship no, no, is no, not no, a secret no, no. anymore. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, today, I'm not sure what to do. I know today uh, I've got a couple of jobs has come up. The Kabura-san prints are here. You know, of course, we opened them. You know, the ones that came, the Fushimi Inari prints. <gasps> well, no, you know, you saw these, right? But we couldn't send them to Ome because nobody's in Ome today. So you said they've got to go to Ome today because Ome is in there on Friday. This is what you told me. And I just realized actually that they're not, you know, they're not uh, uh, embossed yet. So, so I have to emboss them today and we'll get them off today so Ome will get them tomorrow morning. They are actually here today. We had this conversation Tuesday and then... And you said ship them Thursday. Arrive, oh, sorry, Arrive I was gonna, on Thursday. Sorry, arrive on Thursday. No, ship Thursday because I was going to open them on stream on Thursday. I saw this girl. <laughs> Do I have a recording of this conversation? <laughs> Okay, anyway, all right, sorry, okay, sorry, anyway, sorry. no, okay, okay, okay. Anyway, the thing I just realized, of course, that they're not embossed yet either. So, so that's bump. As soon as the stream is over, I have to get embossing on that one. Okay, yeah, as soon as the stream is over, I have to grab you and ask you to get the, get Ukiyo Hero Sprints. That's the first. Oh, yeah, that one too, okay, okay. So and Yamada-san wants me to do that CSV for oh, the, for no. the import of the oh, accounting no. busy, system. Busy. Kind of busy, kind of busy, kind of busy, kind of busy, so, 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 so. <laughs> so, so I was saying just, just give up, you're not going to get anything done today anyway, so whatever. So. <laughs> Talk less and then move more. Yeah, okay, you understand, okay, all right, okay. Okay, sorry about that. No problem, yeah, well, then you better, whatever, I know, ride her tightly on me today to make sure I get these things done. So just watch me during the day. Okay, right, see okay, how it okay. Goes, okay. You know? So I've got no idea, customers are going to be in yesterday, uh, today or not. Oh, right, so, so. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll okay. be quiet. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, keep a good thumb on me today, please. Right, let's get this stuff. I will right. come down All right. after the stream. Okay, thanks, Thank Amazon. You. Thank you. I'm sure she said ship them Thursday. The, the question is Ome staff. Ome is waiting to ship these. And her comment now is that Ome is actually today there waiting for these. She thinks I shipped them last night. Okay, whatever. She had said, I guess, arrive Thursday. I thought she said ship Thursday. And my backup for that is because when she said ship Thursday, that means, oh, good. That means I can open these on the stream. 
So I left them on my desk all day yesterday, thinking I would open them on the stream, as I did, and then ship today to arrive tomorrow. So I can't argue with her. It's quite possible I misunderstood what she said. We don't hate the conversation, so maybe she's right, maybe I'm right. But whatever, things are what they are. Things are what they are. Let's carve a bit more. 902, okay. Mm -hmm. There is one thing about Ayano-san, though, absolutely. When this sort of thing does happen, when there's been clearly some sort of misunderstanding, I thought you said this, I thought you said that, and you wanted me to do this, it didn't get done. Inevitably, you know, we get people working here and this stuff happens. But with Ayano-san, when this sort of thing happens, the real cool thing is that both of us were like, okay, I guess I was the one that was wrong, maybe, or whatever, and there, there's no stress and there's no hostility and there's no black cloud in the room. There are other people around, you know, and, and sometimes it's me. There are other people around when you have this situation with a specific person where it gets black, you know, it gets black. One person starts to get a little bit hostile. Here we go again. That's not what I told you. And sometimes that's me with some of the people here, and sometimes it's some of the other people here. So she and I seem to be okay with this. I, I back off instantly when this thing happens. Maybe it's a question of respect or something. I don't know. I back off instantly because I really do not want any trouble with her. And I'm very, very willing to admit that uh, I misheard what she said or forgot what she said or something like this. You know. But it's not always smooth and easy. Well, you, all, you all know how this works. People are people, you know. And the more people are in any given group, and we're now pushing 30 people in our immediate group here, it's kind of inevitable that sometimes person A and person B, you know, have a, have a, have a thing, you know, it doesn't quite get along easily all the time, so. There's also the question about not having the last word, you know. Both of us are mature enough that you don't have to be the person that has the last word. You were wrong and I was right, you know, that kind of thing. There's nothing like that involved here, you know. I'm beyond that many, many, many years ago. I may have been more like that when I was younger, but certainly not anymore. I've got to be right, you know. I'm so, in my mind, I'm so right that it's got to be verbalized. Other people also have to understand that I'm the one that was right. And I don't, I, don't, I don't do that anymore. It's been a long, 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 long time since I behaved like that. But uh, it's the classic, you know, somebody on the internet is wrong. But in real life, you know. So. <laughs> raiders, raiders. So friends from David's channel. Yes. So, so, so. Welcome, guys. See you around here now and then.
Okay, it's getting closer to show and tell time. We will have a show and tell today. And it's going to be the one that I sort of teased you about the other day. We're going to go back in time a little bit. I mentioned the other day that uh, Friend Sadako had been spending a lot of time doing research on some of the prints in the collection. Namely, that series of prints that purported to show the difference between good behavior and evil behavior as sort of a teaching device. The moral of the story is such and such. So today I've brought those prints down from upstairs. And although we did see them quickly when I bought them from Yahoo Auction a couple of years ago, today we're going to look at them now with the benefit of knowing what they are. Sadako has gone through the things, she's figured out the story, she knows what it's all about. And we'll look at those prints now the way they should be viewed, with the actual knowledge of what they are and what's going on. This is the problem with a lot of these show and tells we do, you know, especially the ones when I open the package on a stream. I'm opening a package of prints that I just received and have done clearly no research on them whatsoever. I bought them because I think they looked interesting and that there was something there worthy of, of learning. But we just open the package on stream, we don't really know what we're seeing and away the prints go. So we're probably going to do this particular thing now a little bit more often now and then. Especially now that we've got somebody here, Sadako, she's working in the background, enjoying herself, digging into the background of many of these prints and learning what they are. So this is really bringing an extra, uh, extra level of interest to this collection of ours. So that's what we're going to look at today, starting at 9.15 or so. We're going to get to the moral of the story is. So you're talking about the ads, are you? Okay, well, I will look through this. You know, thanks for the information. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll learn what I can later on. Oh, what about the chrysanthemum prints? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll. Mm, um. Yes, okay, let's do both. Let's do both. Let's do that. Somebody reminded me. Tom 1060 reminded me. What about the chrysanthemum prints? Yes, you're right. You're right. I promised it, so I can't tease. Let's do that. Say goodbye to the block for a while. Today's Thursday. You're going to see it in two more days. Today I will not do a whole lot more progress on this block. Friday I hope to. So come Saturday morning maybe, my guess is that we might see this cat completely finished. We'll be working on the other cat. That's my prediction for Saturday's stream. No guarantees. No guarantees. No guarantees. Someone's asking, how often do I need to sharpen that tool? It was yelling at me. It was saying, sharpen, sharpen, sharpen. I didn't do it because we were nearly at the end of the stream, but it was yelling at me. It said, Dave, time to touch up. How often do we need to do it? I can't give you a number. The, the last couple of days when I worked on this block all through the day, not every hour, not every couple of hours, maybe every 90 minutes or so, it's really, really hard to give you a number. I would have sharpened three or four times during the day. Touch-up sharpening. It didn't break at all. We're talking about touch-up sharpening on the 1200. Will we see you sharpen it next stream? I don't know. I guess so. The fact that we're only doing this such a short time each time means the, you know, whatever. Poke me. Ask me. Okay, here we are. These are the prints produced by our, one of our Top Gun printers, Natsuki Suga. She started in the Adachi workshop a bunch of years ago, 20 years ago maybe, I don't know, not sure how old she is. She started in the Adachi workshop, did a bunch of years there working together with Kubota-san, then left for reasons that she would really not want me to talk about on, on, uh, in public, and uh, left. She went, she learned on a shiatsu massage and went off to be a masseur. 
Then she heard some years ago, it must be 96, 7, 8 years ago, she heard from Kubota san, who she had kept in touch with, that Dave was looking for printers, and Kubota san really recommended it. He said, No, this place is okay. And she had said something like, I'll never go and be a printer again. It's just too abusive, too much trouble. And he said, No, 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 this place is okay. Trust me, trust me, trust me. She came over and she'd been working with us ever since. There is a problem with me in that she is a married lady. So there's a real limit to how much time she can spend each week. She does two days, sometimes three days a week. But here she is. This is the first finished batch of prints of the chrysanthemums done by somebody who is not me. And what do you think, boys and girls? What do you think? Are these ready for prime time? What do you think? Now, somebody's might be a few questions. Let me force all the questions. You might look at this line and say, oh my God, she printed this so roughly. This is no good. What's going on here? It's all bashed up. That's in the carving. These Kuchie prints were made with lots of what's called kasure. The lines were carved in the original prints with lots of scratching to make it look like, you know, dirty brush or a brush running out of ink. The hair is full of it. So just so you understand what's happening here, these dots and pips and grotesque grong, 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 this is not defect. This is design. These are, you know, the same old expression. This is not a bug. This is a feature. So don't get confused by the kasure if you've never seen one of these prints before. That's a feature. So what do you think, ladies and gentlemen? This is not just the nice top copy. She has given me a stack of prints here. I've got to decide on a couple of things. We are obviously going to sell these. They're beautifully, beautifully done. But I've got to figure out the price. And I've got a major problem in figuring out what to charge for these. And it should be easy. Count up the cost of the paper, count up the cost of the printer, how many hours she spent on it, make sure we're giving her a premium fee because this is very, very difficult work, work out our costs and go for it. But there's something else that I have to mention. It's a little bit embarrassing to mention it for her, but I have got to think about this in my calculations. This is her third batch of prints. There's 50 or 60 copies here, but this is the third try. The first try, 60 copies, didn't make it. The second try, I think there was 40 or so copies, didn't make it. It's taken 150 sheets of paper or so to get these 40 or 50 sheets, and it's taken her three times the amount of time to do it. Now, if I wanted to cost that in to this print, Notice my costs are three times as high for each one of those. But the thing is now, she's got this. She has now got it. So the next one she makes will be, of course, at least as good as these. So that initial extra cost for me, for her training and for her mistakes and for her, you know, whatever, that sunk cost, that's gone. So I'm thinking, forget it, it's sunk cost, it's like the rent, it's finished, it won't be coming back. Next time she prints this one, it won't be there. But she's not going to do the next batch. She can't become a chrysanthemum printer for the next 55 years. So the next person is going to have to do the same thing, learn how to do it, have a huge number of spoiled copies. And that's the way this is going to go around and around and around. So how much of the training time, the spoiled copies, do I need to put into the price for the print? I'm looking for the show and tell material. What did I do with it? Here it is. Here it is. Anyway, I'll figure that out. I'll chat with her. I'll figure it out. 
talk to Ayano san the people on the staff, try and figure out what to do. So the print will be coming to a website fairly near you. When it is ready, we're going to do uh, an email blast about it. You know, we call it a MailChimp. You know, we use the MailChimp service to do, uh, to do announcements. So it will be ready somewhere in the next little while. John says 30,000. John, I can't. It's not that large. I can't get 30,000 for it. Someone says, why not sell the spoiled copies? No. End of discussion. No. Okay, let's move along. Show and tell. Okay, I don't have a number. Can somebody help me, please? Can somebody get the you know, wood collection number on this? Let's zip through these. We have 10, 15 minutes left, whatever. Here are the set of prints. And I don't even remember the designer's name. Oh my God, I didn't prepare for this today. Someone's got the link. 244, Tom1060's got it. Remind me, who's the artist on this? Remind me, remind me, remind me. Who's the artist on this? I don't remember. And also the date. This is from the uh, early Meiji period. Can I? Shousai Ikke. Thank you. And the date these were made, I don't remember. The point being, we have a set of prints designed to elucidate good and bad behavior. And thanks to Sadako now, we know what's going on. Let's run through them. And each print, this is number one, just so you know the format, each one of the prints in this set is the same. It's the guy who is a reprobate, and I tell you right now, he's gonna end up as a beggar on the street. And this guy is the good man, and as we go through life stages one by one, he is going to end up happily forever after. So that's the, uh, that's the ending story. We know where this is going. And step one, we're gonna see the same character go through different episodes in life, and the same thing. We're going to see the same character who took the right-hand path instead of the left-hand path. So instead of lifting up and lifting down and lifting up and lifting down, let's do it this way. Let's zoom in on the top guy and just follow his progression through life accompanied by a bunch of little devils. The bad guy has red devils and the good guy has white little angels. I'm using Christian terminology, but whatever, it doesn't make any difference. It's the same concept in many, many, many cultures. Here we go. And here is our bad guy. There's a shop here. This is the shopkeeper. He's waving his abacus. His attendant is uh, telling him, you know, lay back, lay back. And we have some kind of behavior in the shop here. This man, apparently, he's going to be a rickshaw cart driver, we learn. In the good guy things, he's driving his rickshaw, and in the bad guy pictures also, his rickshaw is here. We're not sure if the exact job is the same all the way through. Anyway, the evil, the evil devils are cheering on the bad behavior, and we have some kind of fight happening in the shop here. Daikoku, one of the seven lucky gods, the guy who collects all the money and happiness and riches, is on his way out. Nothing for me here. This is just nothing but stress and strife. Number two, here we are, our reprobate is either on the way out for a night of fun or he's on the way back after a night of fun. He's on a rickshaw cart, the bad, I think he's on his way out for a night of fun because the devils are pulling him along, let's go, let's go, let's hustle, let's hustle. What he doesn't realize is that in all his carefree happiness here, he has dropped his wallet on the floor. We'll come back to that in a minute, keep that in mind. But here we are at the restaurant. Geisha singing, dancing, a guy presenting a bill, a lady presenting another bill. He's digging in his purse. The, uh, the devils are waving fans. This is a let's go. If you go to a sumo wrestler, baseball, whatever, fan waving is, uh, is an expression of encouragement. More, 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 more. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Maybe imps. I'm using devils. Maybe imps would be the right word. There's expensive food on the table. Geisha for entertainment. We know the deal. This is a reprobate behavior. Number four. Here we are. This is cherry blossom season and our hero either is on his way to cherry blossom viewing or on his way back and he has been mislaid <clears throat> and there's a, a boat attendant here who's saying, hey, come on, come on. You've finished the cherry blossoms now. You've had enough to drink. Get on my party boat and let's go for more. And this is one of those boats that ply the Sumida rivers. The geisha are standing by. Temp and we know he is going to succumb 
to temptation. Here we go. This is our friend at home. He's drunk or something. He's angry. He's stomping. He's overturned a table. He's smashing things. The cooking stove has all been turned over. This is his wife. And he's saying, you can make up your own bad language here. He's saying, get the out of here. I can't stand you anymore. And she's saying, you're not going to get rid of me that easily. No way. It's chaos everywhere. And the devils are busy smashing stuff up and encouraging the two to fight. We move along to the next scene. The man is here. The wife is here. The place is a bit cleaned up. There's a writing set of this writing inkstone and brushes. And where do we have the rolled up paper? He has written the divorce paper. This is the go-between. He may have been involved in marrying them in the first place, but he's certainly involved in the separation. The devils are chopping the cord that binds the two people. It's all over. He is now alone. He's lost his partner. We now move to his place of business. It turns out he's a rice merchant. And look at this. He is clearly a hoarder. Now, we know from the history of the Edo and early Meiji eras that the rice supply went up and down and up and down. There was famine years, good years, bad years. Rice prices were attempted to be controlled by the government, but they were all over the place. The captions here tell us the story. This guy is a representative from an agricultural group. The rice is coming in from the barges outside, and he is only offering that much. And the guy is saying, we can't survive. We can't do that. That's not enough. And he's saying, basically, take it or leave it. He is a rice hoarder and an evil speculator. Another one, entertainment again. They're playing some kind of drinking game. They're filling up this massive large cup with this. It's party time, top to bottom. Shamisen is standing by. It keeps coming back to this same theme. Drinking and dancing is bad for you. I'm not quite sure if that's true, but whatever. It keeps coming back to the same thing. He's back at home now. And we are on our way down. His wife, of course, is long gone. Something's gone wrong with his business. Maybe rice prices turned down. We don't really know the details. This guy is someone he has called in to buy some stuff, like a pawnbroker. The guy has got some scrolls, a lamp, a bunch of dishes and bowls. He left some money on the floor. So this guy is selling the possessions from his house, ready, of course, to buy. You know what he's buying. He's buying bottles and bottles of booze. And coming in the door are two old, they look like ghosts, they are the gods of poverty, entering stage left. We know where this is going. We're at number nine. There's three left. This is a set of 12. We're outside his house. It's all closed. He's been kicked out for non-payment of rent or he's leaving whatever. He's going somewhere cheaper. All his goods are now on a cart. And the guy's saying, where are we going? And the gods of poverty are now living with him. They're traveling with him. It's the next stage down. He's in his new place, little one room place, whatever. There's not even enough room for the gods of poverty. They're still hanging around outside, not enough room inside. This is from the local neighborhood association. He's come along with a little paper asking for donations. You're a new member in town here. Please donate to the blah, blah, the maintenance upkeep, you know, the normal community affairs. Please, a little donation, any amount would be fine. And we know what he's saying. Out, be off with you. Nothing. Out, you go. And now, here we are at stage 12. We're done. He's on the street. He's destitute. He's a beggar. From my point of view, I, this looks to me like this is his death scene. The gods of poverty are now flying away off into the sky and he has died. But Sadako says, no, there's nothing that specifically says he's died. He's just simply a beggar and people are throwing little coins in his bucket here and there. And Sadako made the point that he's simply angry and upset about this, but without showing any regret, without showing any feeling that he brought it on himself. He's simply like, what's going on? Why is this happening to me? And blah, 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 blah. There we are. Number 12. <laughs> so, <laughs> tell you what, it's 9.30. Let's save the other one for the next stream. <laughs> what was the alternate version of life? Actually, I don't think it's as interesting. We should have started with the good guy <laughs> and done the bad guy later. Let's leave it here for now. 
The thing for me though, I chatted with Sadako about this and she doesn't really have such a clear answer for me because we don't really know. Who bought this stuff in, what was it, 1860? Is that the date, whatever? They published this. And obviously, it was a bestseller type of stuff because this is one set. This same designer did three sets of the same kind of thing. One to 12, one to 12, one to 12. Good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. They were obviously good sellers. They sold well. Who bought them? And why? Was it mothers buying them to leave on the house so, so the kids would read it? Or did they present this to kids as being, here you go? I don't know. Has something changed in society? There was Aesop's fables, you know, you're supposed to run hard like the rabbit or slow and steady like the tortoise. The moral of the story is we had these things. I think when I was a kid, it wasn't such a big deal, but they still existed. And I think nowadays you see it in, in movies and animated movies, a Pixar movie, whatever, couldn't be built unless there was a, a moral, you know, we're going to learn not to discriminate against such and such person, stuff like that. So maybe nothing has changed. The things we are consuming for what we think is entertainment are actually being directed at us as being cynical view propaganda or non-cynical view uplifting educational material. I don't really know. Husbands bought this for their wives. Wives bought it for their husbands. I don't know. Anyway, it's great fun. Great fun. And this is uh, an extra bonus for me. You know, I'm interested in making prints. I'm not going to reproduce this. It's not even that beautifully printed or carved or made. But to be more involved in the wider world of what these things were is really fun for me. And it brings an extra dimension to my life as a, as a modern, as a contemporary printmaker. Anyway, anyway, anyway. If I feel like it, we'll look at the bottom half on the next stream. But right now, I have got to get going. Thursday morning here. Thanks very much, guys. I'll see you two days from now, Saturday morning, Friday evening for most of you. It's actually drizzling. It started. I told you it was going to rain, and so it is. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks to the mods for keeping things on track here. I, and I recently, I'm very sorry, I haven't been giving out chocolate eggs where they are due. I've sort of uh, backed off that a little bit. My apologies for people that have been helping us out and suggesting and... Uh, and contributing to the conversations in the community. Thank you very much. I am going to go grab a cup of coffee, chat with Aino-san for a minute, and then get to work. Thanks very much, and I'll see you again Saturday morning. Bye for now.